All right, hi everyone. Welcome back this week. Now you're watching a pre-recorded streamed video, okay? Um, this week I've been a little bit busy, so I figured this format I could get the message out a little bit quicker. And for my US viewer, I hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving family time. Now today I want to chime in a little bit on the Novavax booster. I saw a lot of you left me comment asking me about this topic, and I also received an email from one of the viewer, Renee, asking about the same topic. So let's take a look. Now before I begin, uh, I want to be very honest and candid. Uh, in in fact, my uh, father is considering getting his second booster or the fourth dose uh, for the, uh, the COVID mRNA vaccine or COVID. Uh, vaccine booster. So uh, let's pretend we are having a conversation. You are my father and what I would tell you. Okay. So before I um, start, I have to lay out uh, some official message before uh, everything else so that I'm complied with the U, uh, YouTube community guidelines. Now the Novavax COVID vaccine is now only authorized as the first booster dose by the US FDA, which uh, the authorization was issued uh, basically on October 19th. Okay. And according to the CDC, the Novavax monovalent COVID-19 booster, it's only recommended as the first booster for people who have gotten two doses of the primary series. So what does that mean? It means, in other words, Novavax monovalent booster is currently not authorized or recommended as the second booster, which some of you may be thinking getting it as a second booster for the winter in the Northern Hemisphere. So that is not authorized, but we'll look at some of the data, okay? So now when we read into the CDC recommendation, um, it looks like CDC does not seem to be encouraging people to get the Novavax booster. It it's basically says, well, for people who are unwilling to receive mRNA vaccine or who are potentially allergic to it, or uh, had a severe allergic to mRNA vaccine, uh, then go ahead, get the Novavax. Now, this type of recommendation is not only in the U.S. And for example, here, uh, we're looking at the Australian uh, vaccine government website, basically. And it says pretty much the same thing. Uh, Novavax is not preferred, okay, and it's only for people who have a history of severe allergic reaction or uh, had previous or history of myocarditis attributed to an mRNA vaccine and people who do not prefer an mRNA vaccine. Okay, so that's our some of the official message there. Now, I believe some of these recommendations do not make a whole lot of uh, scientific sense, and I'll explain why. Now, first, if a, someone already has a history of a vaccine associated, attributed, whatever word you want to use, uh, related myocarditis, then getting Novavax is not necessarily any safer for the younger population. Uh, why is that? Then let's take a look. So basically, uh, the European okay, Medicine Agency, uh, the EMA, it's now uh, requiring or basically wants the Novavax vaccine to have warning labels of myocarditis and pericarditis risk. Um, so that's the official message. It's not like uh, the Novavax carries zero risk of myocarditis especially for the younger population. Now, first, we need to be aware that the um, COVID mRNA vaccine-related myocarditis was first reported in around April or May in 2021 in young males under 30 years old. And after that, there have been many studies trying to compare the risk of myocarditis between second dose, third dose, fourth dose, and uh, between different vaccines, the Pfizer mRNA vaccine or the Moderna mRNA vaccine, and they look like the Moderna had a higher risk, slightly higher, maybe due to the higher dose it contained in the uh, in the vaccine. 
and as well as between vaccine-related and actual COVID disease-induced or related myocarditis. Now, what it tells us is that more and more evidence shows the myocarditis may not be an mRNA technology-related event, but rather an immune response or reaction or overreaction to the viral component. Now, the similarity between vaccines and the disease is the spike protein. And even though the vaccine uh, protein is modified in a way in a locked position, so it's a little bit different, uh, it basically in a protein way of speaking. Um, but I'm not, you know, really very confident to say that someone with a history of myocarditis attributed to an mRNA vaccine would be any safer with vaccines containing the same viral antigen. Uh, just to clarify that the slight increased risk of myocarditis has not been shown or identified in older population, basically everyone 65 above, there has not been any uh, increased risk of myocarditis associated with any of the COVID vaccine. All right, so the next question would be whether Novavax is any worse than mRNA vaccine, all right? So the CDC really didn't do too much public explanation, in my opinion, but I believe they said the Novavax booster was less preferred because it is a monovalent booster versus the newer bivalent booster, presumably better in terms of protection against infection in the days of BA5 and other Omicron subvariants. In other words, the officials assumes uh, the immunological properties of Novavax, which is a protein-based vaccine, will be similar to the mRNA vaccine. And because it is monovalent, so it is less preferred or worse than the bivalent. Now, is that so? Is that assumption make sense? Let's again look at some data or some uh, press release, basically. All right. So we are basically looking at um, a data set which was presented by uh, Novavax. Okay. Uh, and it's a pr uh, Basically, it is a uh, bivalent vaccine animal data that was presented by Novavax during the June 28th FDA Vaccine Advisory Committee meeting. And we, if we go down to um, the one of the latest slides, okay, here we are. This graph shows no, basically no differences in antibody blocking effect between the original, which is the um, on the left-hand side panel here, the BA1 exclusive uh, Novavax vaccine and a bivalent vaccine in their monkey study or monkey experiments. Um, so in addition to the animal studies, they also started human study in May, according to their report to the FDA. Um, so the question is, what about the effect against BA5? Okay, so um, very recently, uh, relatively recently, on October 12th, Novavax released a press release. I know it is press release, not the best. Claiming boosters um, with their original monovalent vaccine induce robust antibody titers for both BA1, BA2, BA5. All right, hold that thought there. And also in a separate interview, um, their uh, chief medical officer with CNBC here basically says that they think they had a product that has a broad immune response and they're not going to chase the virus each time a new variant crops up, and that's their hypothesis so far, all right? So that's their message. Now, I know all of these are non-peer-reviewed data, and I always have reservations when I quote these data or press releases in my videos, but if the officials are okay with Pfizer and Moderna press releases, what makes Novavax press releases any different than theirs? None of them are peer reviewed anyway, right? So, so far I have not seen any research paper saying Novavax is any better or worse 
than the two mRNA vaccine. There is no head-to-head -head comparison, right? Um, in fact, I don't think it is fair to compare the slight differences in antibody titer levels or short-term effectiveness in infection protection because for a COVID disease nowadays has evolved into a much, much shorter incubation period uh, in order to block off or encounter or infection, basically you have to top off the antibody levels constantly to fight every single virus encounter. Um, in my opinion, it is just not very physiologically feasible in the long run, okay? So for some of you, and like for my father, the question is again to boost or not to boost, okay? Now, Dr. Fauci recently urged Americans, okay, let's quote his, put up his word. All right, Dr. Fauci here um, basically urged Americans uh, to get the latest bivalent booster. And particularly, uh, there has been new real world data claiming the bivalent vaccine is better. All right. So now, what is all the data? Where are they coming from? Actually, they are coming from this uh, CDC, uh, Mobility and Mortality Weekly Report, uh, just a few days ago on November 22nd. Basically, they are comparing, uh, you know, how the bivalent mRNA vaccine in preventing symptomatic, okay, even mild cases of uh, COVID uh, infections. All right. Now, it's a, it's a pretty long report. Um, so I go to, you know, some of the, I double checked with their, uh, their, their word, basically what it says is when given the bivalent booster eight months uh, or more apart relative effective uh, vaccine effectiveness of the new booster compared to the old one was 56% among people aged 18 to 49 48% among people 50 to 64, and 43 among people aged 65 and older, okay? So uh, remember a couple weeks ago, I think two, three weeks ago, I made a video about, uh, you know, how Dr. Zha made a claim that uh, the bivalent vaccine is four times better. Um, yeah, it's four times more immunogenic, okay? But the effectiveness, okay, based on real world data, it is not four times better. Okay, it's not four times better, definitely. So uh, now, what if you get the bivalent vaccine in a much shorter period? What's going to happen? Now, the, the vaccine it the effectiveness will be much lower, okay, in the range of 28 to 38 percent when the booster were given two to three months apart, okay? So that means you got your first booster, uh, and then three months later, you go ahead and get your fourth booster, which is a bivalent vaccine. The effect is much, much lower. Okay, so that's that's the message right now. All right. Now, what are these real-world data? We have to ask ourselves. Uh, what are these real-world data's limitations, right? Uh, there is a history of a previous infection, which some people may have asymptomatic or just didn't test it right, okay? Uh, so that history could be, you know, somewhat different among people. What other things is different or could be an imitation in the real world, uh, exposure levels. You cannot expect someone living in a city having the same amount of virus exposure to someone living in a more rural area. So those are all uh, valid concerns. And what's more is that, let's take a look about this at this paper. All right, here. Now, I know this is a preprint, has not been peer reviewed yet, okay, but it is a very recent uh, November 20th, okay, preprint, which was uh, done by the Stanford University School of Medicine. So it's coming from a very reputable university. Um, it says, okay, the summary here, just go to the summary by November 10th. 2022, 94%, they're pretty confident that 94% of the U.S. population were estimated to have been infected by the SARS-CoV-2 at least once. Some may even be more. Okay, so what it tells us is that um, the real-world vaccine efficacy or effectiveness data these days 
would unarguably have some type of hybrid immunity being factored in. And we know that hybrid immunity is quite robust compared to vaccine-only immunity. So all these numbers that we observed from the CDC report, we have to uh, question that a little bit and keep that in mind, how much of that had a hybrid immunity attribution, right? So just to, you know, kind of wrap up a little bit in a, in a way of speaking, uh, as like Fauci said or other officials says, the goal here right now, uh, we are a couple of days before December, is to get another uh, COVID booster vaccine into people's arm to protect family, loved ones, and the community. Then I think don't know why the officials are, you know, so hesitant about authorizing and recommending additional Novavax booster. It's not like Novavax has any uh, fewer press releases, in my opinion, and they also have animal studies. So did um, Pfizer had mouse study, right? Um, so um, that makes me wonder if the recommendation is only because government has purchased a specific product and not because of scientific findings, then I would be, you know, I'm very disappointed again in how the officials are doing science these days. Uh, well, I've talked about a lot on Novavax and I know that this video sounded like I am supporting Novavax, but I want to make it clear I'm not affiliated with them, and I don't even own any Novavax stock, so I have no conflict of interest. Again, no official authorizations or recommendations says to use Novavax as the second booster at this time. So that's the official message. Um, certainly, we are at a very different time right now compared to now, last November when Omicron first popped up and everyone were a little bit uncertain and scared. Um, almost all of us now basically have some type of immunity, either from vaccine, from booster, from hybrid, from infection alone. Um, and any additional booster can offer some limited boost in protections uh, for a few months. That's pretty solid, uh, which may be necessary for some people, I believe that. But is it for everybody? That is a question that you need to ask yourself, right? Um, again, uh, my goal here is to provide a balanced information for my viewers to make informed health decisions. And so I've talked a lot. What would be my message to my father that uh, if he were to boost again with an mRNA vaccine? Uh, now, I will tell them it would cut probably cut infection risk by about 40% for his age. His last uh, dose was a year ago. So that probably fall into that long, uh, little slightly higher uh, protection range. Um, if he asked about Novavax, I would tell them it could be an option if and when FDA starts to make its decision again based on science rather than government purchase agreements. All right, so um, that is all for this week. Uh, and I hope you have, uh, you know, learned something new from this video, perhaps. And thank you very much for watching. And lastly, eat healthy and stay healthy. Please take care. Bye.